Well, it's Che Guevara's birthday, so let's look south of the border. Uh, Guillaume Long is uh, with us, Dr. Guillaume Long, a senior policy analyst with the Center for Economic and Policy Research in Washington, D.C. Previously held several cabinet positions in the government of Ecuador and most recently served as Ecuador's permanent representative of the United Nations in Geneva. He has a Ph.D. in international politics from the University of London. CEPR.net is the website. Guillaume Long, uh, G-U-I-L-L-A-U-M-E, Long is his Twitter handle. Guillaume, welcome back to the program. I, I understand that uh, Lula, the former president of Brazil, is uh, uh, showing a lead in the polls over Bolsonaro. This is, uh, uh, you know, incredibly good news, it seems. Um, uh, first of all, give us a little bit of background, you know, who Lula was and how he did in his uh, years as president of Brazil and, and, of course, who Bolsonaro is and, and what's up with him right now. Well, thanks, Tom, for having me on the show. Uh, yeah, with pleasure. I mean, Lula is certainly in the lead, uh, which is remarkable if you think that a couple of years ago he was in jail. He actually did five, over 500 days of jail on sort of bogus corruption charges, essentially so that he would be out of the political picture and so he couldn't run. But he's now in the lead with, uh, depending on the polls, between 19 and 22 points in the leads, which would give him a first round victory without the need for a runoff, which would give him a, a huge mandate and allow him to govern and make the reforms he wishes to make, I think. So that's very good news for, for, for Brazil, I think, for the PT. For the left in Latin America, of course, because Brazil is not a small player. It's the biggest economy of Latin America, number one. And to have uh, Lula back in power would mean, I think, that the current shift to the left in Latin America would be consolidated. It would mean the global south having a voice. These kinds of things that we've seen in the past. Who was he in the past? I mean, Lula ruled from, was president from uh, January 2003 to December 2000, or 1st of January, to, uh, December 2010, let's say, eight years. And uh, he was a president who greatly reduced poverty uh, and inequality in Brazil. Um, with a lot of redistribution of wealth in one of the most unequal countries in the world. And in terms of, uh, on the international front, in terms of his foreign policy, he was, I think, a great proponent of, uh, well, the rights of the global south, a more multipolar world, less unilateral power and Monroe doctrine in the Western Hemisphere on behalf of the United States. Uh, that's kind of, I mean, very broad brushstrokes how I would describe Lula. Would you would you would it be fair to call Lula the Bernie Sanders of Brazil? I mean, we, Bernie Sanders has never governed, uh, you know, from the executive branch, so it's very difficult to say. But yeah, I, I would I would agree that I think they they share a lot in common. They progressive politicians. Some people on the left of Lula have actually criticized Lula for not being radical enough, enough, and which was actually a criticism that was laid at the um, political left in, that was in government in a number of countries in Latin America, that they weren't radical enough, that they essentially modernized capitalism, which is actually, you know, when you modernize capitalism and bring on a welfare state, it can be you know, uh, you, you're still taking big risks. You're being, you know, you're you're being running the risk of being toppled. In the case of Lula, he actually, you know, ended up in jail. So I would argue that sometimes the modernization of capitalism, making it more human and and socially uh, redistributive, and so on and so forth, can be can be quite radical in a way. But he did have a current to his left uh, that was critical of him. Um, so I mean, to what extent that compares to the U.S. left in general? Um, I think, yeah, his natural allies would be the progressive camp in the United States, and certainly that includes prominently uh, Bernie Sanders. Right. Um, I, one of the things that I've, I've, and not just me, I mean, the world has noticed is that when democracies are taken over by strongman right-wingers and uh, uh, Putin taking over Russia, uh, uh, the, the, the situation in Hungary, uh, you know, uh, the Philippines now. I, increasingly, in, in country after country, what we see is that uh, when, when these right-wingers take over these countries, they start shifting um, all the structures of power. Um, Viktor Orban, for example, in Hungary basically uh, helped oligarchs associated with him acquire all of the media, essentially all of the major media in Hungary. So, it all, you know, so it, you know, just imagine in the United States if every single station was like Fox News. That's what it's like in Hungary right now. Um, he, he changed who could vote and where. I mean, it was like hyper gerrymandering, essentially, in Hungary. Um, same thing in Russia. You know, Putin did the same thing in Russia. 
How is it that Bolsonaro has been president as long as he has, with a, as autocratic a bent as he has, and the support he's had in, in, in the parliament there, without having rigged the system like his right-wing colleagues around the world have? Or has he rigged the system and there's some sort of an explosion coming? So this is a very good question, and it's, there's some doubt about this. I mean, there is some fear that come the October elections, Bolsonaro may not recognize the results of the elections. Uh, he's been hinting, with this. it's very opaque, we don't really know, but there seem to be certain sectors of the Brazilian military that kind of are on the sort of on his side, essentially, and that could be, could be potential allies in a... Uh, essentially in a, in a kind of a coup in not recognizing the results which are very likely to lead to a Lula victory in the polls. But on the other hand, you ha we have seen over the last four years of disastrous Bolsonaro rule uh, that the elites are not all aligned with Bolsonaro anymore. I don't even think the military is completely aligned with Bolsonaro anymore. There's, there's a lot of divisions inside the military. Now, why that is, I mean, there are a number of reasons. First, it's been a disaster for Brazil. I mean, you know, we can, we can, we can kind of see how Putin's become a strong man because of the disaster of the 1990s. I'm not going to go back to that history, but you can see how Putin became a strong man by putting back Russia on its tracks and sort of playing power politics and all these kinds of things. Bolsonaro has not done that. On the contrary, the person who puts Brazil on the global map is Lula, and the, pers the person that takes Brazil off the glo global map and makes it a sort of very a sort of, yeah, a country that has very little to offer and, and uh, is not really part of the global debates and so it doesn't generate any pride on behalf of the Brazilian people in the role and the position of Brazil in the world. Well, that's Bolsonaro. So, you know, the elites, uh, including some elite, uh, elite institutions, the foreign ministry is very powerful in Brazil. It's called Itamarachi. It's very famous in Latin America. And not very sort of, you know, they don't have this pride in Bolsonaro as a, as a global leader. So maybe there's a difference there between Bolsonaro's style of rule and other sort of rightist populists that you've mentioned here who've got a strong, who play a strong nationalist card. Bolsonaro, from the beginning, said that he was going to be completely aligned with the United States and he was going to do whatever the United States says. This is not the behavior we've seen from other right-wing populists around the world. So right. I think Although Trump a, was in power at that difference. time, was he not? That's right. So, uh, so Bolsonaro might have been binding himself more closely to Trump than to the United States. That's, that's correct. I think that's right. I mean, I, I think we've seen Bolsonaro at the Ninth Summit of the Americas uh, last week really trying to sort of repair his ties with the United States, as in, in this case, with the Biden administration. I'm not sure how successful that's going to be, but he's now playing the card of, hey, I'm your guy against the return of communism, you know, in inverted right. commas. You know, he's trying to play that card. So he's definitely, uh, I think, He's tried to play both in different moments, both Trump's guy and the U.S. imperialism's guy in the region, if you see what I'm trying to say. Yeah, fascinating stuff. Guillaume Long, a senior policy analyst with the Center for Economic and Policy Research in Washington, D.C., previously in the cabinet in Ecuador, in the government of Ecuador, and Ecuador's permanent representative of the U.N. in Geneva. Uh, Guillaume, thanks again so much for dropping by today. It's great talking with you.